this is like the 70,000th take. I can't even speak English right now. of FAQOV with your host, Phil Freeman, where I answer all of your questions having to do with singing and speaking and using your voice in a happy and healthy way. And today, we're talking about the larynx and your chest tone, keeping it from sounding pulled, keeping a relaxed larynx, strategies to help you get the best out, best out of your high chest voice without hurting yourself or getting strained. So it's something that I, it's a, it's a question and a topic that I am asked about constantly, how to keep a healthy chest tone in your higher register um, without hurting yourself, without sounding strained. And uh, one, of the, one of the most common things that I see when students try to reach up for a higher note is that they'll pull their head up, they'll pull their larynx up, and as a result, strain their voice cords to try to reach up for the note. And um, my strategy with them to keep a neutral or low larynx is to meet the larynx with everything else that's happening around it. So instead of trying to reach up for the note, bring your body into the best posture that you possibly can. Meet the chest with the, with the tip of the chin. Get into optimal head position. I have a video that talks about optimal head position in, um, in earlier episodes. I'll link to that in the description below. Also, the use of the jaw, the tongue, the position of the mask, and the and the vowel shape all contribute to the relaxation of the larynx. So rather than bringing all your conscious attention to what's happening here, it's important to bring more conscious attention to everything that's happening around it. So instead of trying to pull for the note and using the larynx to do so, or trying to pull the neck up for that note, meet the note. Arrive at the note by putting yourself in the right position. So given that, uh, let's talk about some parallels that we can draw to this. Um, for example, when you're doing cardio, are you concentrating only on the heart or are you concentrating on your limbs, the movement of the actual exercise, the reps that you're getting in, everything else that's happening around it? It benefits the heart greatly. It's very healthy for the circulation. It, it's, it's very beneficial for the things that are happening in the background subconsciously on its own. But your concentration is on what what's happening around the heart, not the heart itself. Let's think about a saxophone for a second. Imagine that your vocal cords, and this is just a part of the saxophone, it's the reed. Everything else, the valves, the horn itself, the way the embouchure uh, shapes around it, the, the, the use of the saxophone, that is such a, that's so much bigger of a uh, piece in this puzzle than than the reed. The reed is a part of it, but to concentrate all of your energy energy on that is is counterintuitive to what should be done, which is a focus on the entire picture. Another way to think about it is surfing. Are you going to only focus on the wave which is happening on its own? That's just a force of nature that you cannot control, or are you going to focus on the things that you can control? The way that you turn your surfboard, the way that you react to the wave, the turns, the twists, the, 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 the position of your body. That is how you can, there, there are many parallels that you can draw to meeting your chest tone, uh, in, in the, in the healthiest way possible. So, um, given that I hope one of those parallels gives you an idea of how to meet your chest tone properly with the right position. And now I'll go into some examples of how, um, it sounds with a healthy chest tone as opposed to a pulled chest tone. So for those of you who are wondering what a pulled chest tone sounds like, it sounds a lot like this. Uh, 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 you're trying to push up, you're trying to pull up uh, and pulling on the 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 um the larynx to try to get to that note. You're reaching up for the note. Something that something that I like to tell my younger students is to push down and up for the note. Use the entire body, just like Superman or Iron Man. When they push off the ground, they use their entire body, not just their head. They don't reach up and go, I can't get up to the sky. You go Poof! way up to the sky and uh, into the stratosphere. So here's an example of a non-pulled chest tone. Neutral larynx, meeting the larynx with the head and the rest of the body. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now you'll notice that it is a little bit pulled. 
I am recovering from a massively busy weekend of singing and uh, doing all kinds of stuff. So not the best example, but you can certainly see and hear the difference between those two tones. Even in, uh, in even though I'm not 100%, you can definitely hear that there's much more clarity with that optimal position as opposed to what you're doing here. So I hope, everyone, that that gives you a good picture of what a pulled sound, uh, uh, what a pulled chest tone sounds like, what a optimal chest tone sounds like, and it gives you some strategies to help you get over your neck tension by placing it in other places that can take it, and that it allows you to understand the big picture of what's happening by drawing those parallels as well. I am so happy that I'm back and, and continue to make these videos on a more regular basis, and I really appreciate everyone's uh, um, dialogue and, and you know, the, the, sh the ideas that we share here on this YouTube channel and uh, the community abroad. So given that everyone, have a wonderful, wonderful week. Always remember, practice makes progress. And with that, you can go and find your voice. Take care until next time.